Hello, uh, my name is Brian Gordon. I'm with George Fisher Piping Systems and today I'm here in Los Angeles, California with Professor Cohen at UCLA. And we are here today to discuss some advanced reverse osmosis technologies uh, for desalination that he's been involved with. And um, Professor, if you could tell us a little bit about um, your team and your involvement in desalination. Well, we are here today, Brian, because in California right now we have a scarcity, uh, we have a drought condition, and while many people think that the problem has started just recently, the fact of the matter is that California always had issues with water. And this is really where desalination has begun here at UCLA. It started back in the late 50s and through the 60s, and the first membranes for water desalination that were shown to be viable were developed here at UCLA. Those first membranes were developed for brackish water desalination, the first plant in the town of Koalinga that uh, desalted water that had a salinity of about 3,000 milligrams per liter of salt to provide drinking water. So here we are today and we're talking about new advances in water desalination and we are back in the San Joaquin Valley with a new system, the uh, SMART Integrated Membrane System for water treatment and desalination, and specifically to address the issue of impaired groundwater, both because of the increase in salinity and because of contamination that has occurred over the years. But in addition to that, in order to address the issue of salinity reduction in this agricultural area, which is one of the most important ones in the country, especially in California. And then that area, if the problem of salinity is not alleviated, land uh, would have to be retired, retired at a faster pace. And there are various uh, predictions or estimates that we may go up to 20%, maybe, maybe even more in terms of uh, land retirement because the salinity is high. So here at UCLA and with partnerships uh, with various water districts, with various companies, uh, George Fisher uh, being uh, a main uh, partner in this effort, uh, we have embarked on developing uh, smart water uh, technology and particularly to be able to address the issue of desalination in, the, in that part of California where water quality changes very rapidly. So you mentioned automation and sensors. You know, from, from seeing the, the unit, the SIMS unit, I see all kinds of measurement points, conductivity, turbidity, flow, pH, and uh, we're happy, of course, that you chose George Fisher. Now, did you have experience with George Fisher in the past? What, what, what was your reason for going with George Fisher? Uh, we've had experience with George Fisher in the past. Uh, we have developed previously a water desalination plant that focused primarily on seawater. So we had some experience with George uh, Fisher, but we have developed a, a relationship with uh, George Fisher that uh, has grown uh, over time, uh, where George Fisher has taken uh, a very keen interest in, in what we are doing. So it was beyond simply providing UCLA with sensors or actuators, is with George Fisher being part of the process. Where do you see desalination in the future? I believe that desalination should be part of our water portfolio. Uh, water is a critical element of our you know, everyday living. You, you cannot sustain life without water, but we have to remember that water is a commodity that we can ruin if we don't use it properly. At the same time, we have to recognize population is increasing. The amount of fresh water is fixed, and so the amount of water that we have per capita in terms of uh, fresh water is going to decrease. Seawater, on the other hand, uh, provides us essentially with uh, a huge uh, some would say limitless, but I think that this is a little bit over the top, but it provides us with a water supply that, that we can utilize. Some may argue that the cost is, is too high in certain areas or for certain uses, 
and that while that may be true, we have to recognize that it's a source that is there, is available to us. The technology has improved tremendously over the years. The cost has gone down, and I think the cost will go down even further. So we need to, to move forward and push with that technology with the understanding is that we are preparing for the future as well as uh, providing an important part of our water portfolio today. So there are some countries that have moved much further ahead than the United States, for example. Uh, in Israel, about 60% or so of the drinking water supplies now comes from the sea. Uh, Singapore uses uh, water desalination uh, in a big way. Other countries uh, uh, follow the same suit in the uh, Ar uh, Arabian Gulf uh, states uh, as well. So I, I believe that it is important that we move forward and improve the technology, reduce the cost, but at the same time be prepared to utilize this source in a greater way, you know, as, you know, time marks on and as we improve the technology.